Hello there, folks, and welcome to the return of a series I've done on the channel before, Do It Better. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been sacked as Manchester United manager. It was probably coming for about three years. And having watched Ole Gunnar Solskjaer manage Manchester United over the last few years, I fully believe that as a football manager professional, I can do it better. My name is Ben and we're about to go on an adventure which hopefully sees us prove that we can do it better. And I encourage you as well, do the challenge yourself. Can you do this first Manchester United season better than you think Ollie did? Basically stay in the job until November and it's done. So there we go, me, Ben Carr, in charge of Manchester UFC. Dana White will be loving this. So I'm replacing Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer and we're gonna go in and fix this. The media prediction, is fourth but that's not what i heard in the summer i heard that manchester united should be challenging for honors they should be challenging to win things and to me that means another premier league title and i look at the squads and i think it's good enough with lots of changes so we're gonna make some we're gonna do what i think they should have done in the summer window there are lots of things that Edward Woods would like me to do sign high reputation players players sending football sign youth players as well play attacking football i mean and develop players within the club youth system they've kind of been doing that a little bit anyway but that's only because they don't do defending so looking at the squad right there is a general idea that there are there are five world-class talents in this team Jalen sancho may be debatable but you look at his form at dortmund he's definitely got that in him and you look at his attributes for manager he's up there do you know what i mean very 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 good the likes of bruno fernandez and again you've got i got paul pogba in there as well as, as the recent signings of varan and of course one of the best players ever to have existed cristiano ronaldo but was this the right signing was ronaldo the right man for this job it wasn't part of their plans initially manchester city put these bids in and suddenly in the united felt like we have to, if, if he's there, we have to get him. And it made sense, bring him home. But tactically, is Ronaldo being the main man up front what Manchester United should, Manchester United should be doing? I'll, I'll tell you right now, I don't think so. So how will I figure that out and how will I work that out? Well, transfer window wise, we have a little bit of room to manoeuvre. 30 million pounds in transfer budget, 200,000 in wage budget. And some of the players in this squad, I just don't think are good enough. But let me whisk forward. Let me do my transfer window. Let me come back and show you just what I've done. And I can, to, to give you an idea before we before we kick things off, if I create my own tactical style, if, if, if you will, and we put the players where I think you know, I should probably work on, on changing things. I think playing this system with the players that they have and with the style that I think Manchester United should be playing, and I think the problems aren't necessarily where you think. Again, I, I don't think the defence is necessarily the big issue here. I don't think De Gea is the big issue. I think these three positions are the big issue and maybe this one. So let's go into the transfer window. Let's come back. Let's talk you through my signings and then talk about how tactically I intend to set us up for the upcoming season. And let's find out. Can I do it better? This is going to be fun. All right. So I've let four to five to six players go and I've brought in four players. Any predictions? Let's take a look. Now, of course, we had a transfer budget to spend and I had to make that transfer budget bigger so player sales was the first thing on my mind and the first of which to fall by the wayside was fred now i don't think fred is that bad a footballer for manchester united right now he should have worked technically he just doesn't quite have what i look for in, a, in in this midfield and what i think manchester united needs in this midfield he's got a great work rate physicality wise he's he's pretty good right even at five foot seven he still made himself known on a pitch sometimes though for the wrong reasons we've only managed to get and this is the disappointing thing really 23 million pounds as i say we've taken a financial hit but getting him off the wage bill, getting him out of the squad for now was crucial. And a player that falls into a similar mould is one of the attacking players. Anthony Martial for me, and if you've played FM this year, you'll know, is transfer listed from the off and with good reason. He's not 22 anymore. At 25, at some point, he had to start nailing down what sort of player he was and become the main guy at Manchester United. When he first signed in that first season as a youngster, right, 11 goals in 31. And then Van Gaal trying to teach Martial to play a few different ways and to me that was where things started to go wrong quite quickly he never really settled in again attribute wise you look at him he should be fitting in at Manchester United but if you don't play him consistently week in week out I don't think you can expect him to be the player that people expected him to be when you sign the likes of Cavani and Ronaldo and you give more prominence to Rashford uh, Anthony Martial is the sort of player that just disappears really and again it's disappointing that we're only getting 26 million pounds for him but having him out of the way out of the club to bring in extra players it was kind of a necessity 
If I really want to revamp this midfield, some of these players have got to go. Another central midfielder that's out, not just Fred, but Matic as well. While I'd love the presence of Matic, physicality-wise at 33, his drop-off has been so severe that I don't think he's got a place in the Manchester United midfield that I want to play. And when you see the players I've brought in, you'll kind of see why. Again, we've made a massive loss on him this time. Slightly different because he's slightly older, but 2.5 billion off to Wolves. It's an interesting signing for them. He's not exactly Ruben Neves, so we'll, we'll find out. But um, yeah, Nemanja Matic out the door just a little before we bring the big the big the big exit uh phil jones gone as well i've loaned him back to blackburn for, for basically nothing i've done them a huge favor just i wanted to make him happy look look at that face it needs happiness so phil jones has gone and finally the big name uh, off to sheffield united again we're not really making make any money from this but it was best he wasn't at the club for now um, a player and a man that i've got a lot of time for i think one matter uh has also left it just doesn't make sense for Manchester United right now. And then we come to the big one. I've let a major player go. I mentioned that top five before. It's one of them. Now, he was in the final year of his contract. And for many of you, you probably could have predicted. But Paul Pogba is gone. I think this is a signing that had all the tools and all the mechanics to be perfect for Manchester United. They just didn't put the correct players around him. And at this point in his career, in the final year of his contract time to go 31 million pounds received to real madrid i think for a player in the final year of their contract it's not the worst bit of financial business and again for the midfield that i wanted to build paul pogba didn't quite fit into that midfield while i, I questioned fred for not necessarily being technically good enough and that was not something you could throw at pogba that acceleration the work rate the aggression some of those things decision making as well for a player this good right you think of all these technicals and all these physicals he should be superb 12 decision making that just ain't gonna cut it for me. So Paul Pogba leaves and off to Real Madrid he goes. And that left me with a pretty sizable budget. And of course, we did a few of these transfers. Being Manchester United, you can do a few over a number of years as well to get some in. We didn't go crazy, but I think you'll agree some of the additions we've made and why we've made them, it's a good idea. And for those that aren't familiar with Do It Better, as much as we're looking at Pogba here, the idea of Do It Better is this will be a five part series. Uh, we will go through this week, every single day this week, and I will show you the progress of how I'm doing it better. It's a lot more tactical than any of the other series you've seen me do before. We talk about why we're doing certain things, if they're working, if things go wrong, how we fix them. And it's a lot more of a, this is how you play football manager kind of series. So if you're like, you're into that sort of thing and you're enjoying this, fantastic. If you wanna have fun, Glory Hunter, five o'clock every single day. So you mentioned before, right? United made some big signings. The likes of Varane, Sancho, Ronaldo, huge moves, but it was that midfield that I had some real issues with. And the first man we bring in is Jeffrey Kondogbia. Now this is a really interesting signing because with Kondogbia, there are loads of players that would fit and play this position, right? And at 28, you might think, blimey, how much did you spend? Well, 32 million pounds for a player that cost Atletico 9.75, a title winning. Atletico. But the reason you go for, for Jeffrey Kondogbia over maybe the likes of Ndidi, and there's a whole, I will say there's a whole load of players that make sense. One, Kondogbia is slightly cheaper than some of the top talents, but what he has got is the physicality, the aggression, the work rate, and also the passing ability. So when he's winning the ball back as my ball winning midfielder, and that's what he's going to be, he's going to be my destroyer in the centre. He's got the tools then to go out and do more with the ball. And that's what I'm hoping for. And so when he's laying it off to the more creative players in front of him, that makes more sense to me than having someone that can win it back. And then maybe their distribution isn't as good. Or maybe their passing range is really good, but their ability to win it back isn't quite there. Kudogby for me falls right in the middle of all of that. Some of the other options that we could have looked at and were probably a little bit more unlikely. Coquelin, of course, at Villarreal, former Arsenal player. Similar mould, like he would, he would have been pretty close to what we were looking for. But again, a little bit older, not quite as good on the ball. And Samasaku is another one that, again, has got some of the tools, but not quite all of them. Again, some of the, the more technical attributes at the top of the range, not quite there for me. So Kondogbio, again, a perfect fit. And the kind of player I think Manchester United should still be looking to sign in real life right now. The next transfer up is Renato Sanchez. Now, there's two reasons we signed Renato Sanchez. One of them football manager based, one of them player based. The football manager one is that Manchester City were trying to buy him. And I thought... Well, if they want him, it's the Manchester United thing. We'll have him first. He's Portuguese. We'll definitely have him first. But fitting the mould of the kind of midfielder that I want is kind of crucial in this. And we let go of Fred and we let go, let go of Matic. But a player like Renato Sanchez, who can play both that deeper role, again, almost in that ball in midfield role, although I wouldn't necessarily play him there. The fact is, he can play as a box-to-box -box player. He could play as a playmaker. 
and he just fits that perfectly. 23 years of age, still got a little bit of room to grow as well. Has cost me a fair amount of money. 34 million pounds for Renato Sanchez isn't cheap, but he's one of the best players outside of PSG in Ligue 1. And I think attribute-wise, you can see where we've gone for him. The work rate's really high. The physicals are really good. And that technical ability in forward areas, he's basically just an upgrade on Fred. There's not much more I need to say. It's a, it's a really good addition, I think. And a player, I think, if you're Manchester United, is very achievable right now. This is not the same Renato Sanchez that was, was, that was at Swansea on loan from Bayern Munich a few years ago. He's vastly improved. There's already a Portuguese connection at United. I think in real life, again, this is a transfer they should be looking at. Now this is the crown and the jewel. If you're going to sell Paul Pogba, you better be sure you sign somebody else. Now, the problem Manchester United will have in real life at signing Barilla is he's recently signed the new contract into Milan and a very reasonable contract at Inter Milan as well. So who's to say in a year's time there isn't still potential for him to move on? Who's to say they haven't popped a little clause in his contract? But this is the kind of guy that is going to run my midfield. And when I mean run my midfield, I mean run my midfield. That 20 work rate, that 17 stamina, this is the man we wanted. This is the man that I think makes everything tick and allows the players in front of him to be the best that they can be. There is a, This was a crucial part of the system. And when we get to it, you'll see why and we'll talk through why but Barella to me is the perfect midfielder there's not too much wrong with him at all maybe goal scoring is the only thing you look at but if you've got the right players in front of him you never need to worry about that to me again Barella is is a Manchester United midfielder actually like he's he is the complete midfielder and I think to some he's even the midfielder some Manchester United fans may have thought they were getting with Paul Pogba but to me Barella again the perfect addition will slot straight in and when we talk about why and how this is going to make even more sense. But what a player. I mean, very, very good. £74 million. Pounds. It's a lot to spend, but well worth spending. It's structured a little bit as well to make sure we could get him. Um, but yeah, a, a, such a good player. And finally, and it's only the 15th of August, so there's a little bit of time left to manoeuvre. And who's to say we won't bring someone in by the end of January? We're going to play through the first few games uh, and, and bring sort of a bit of analysis in from those games, what we're learning from that and how our system is working from those first three games. And we'll talk through that in just a moment. But Ivan Perisic, and this might catch people out a little bit, a player that was linked with United a lot, I feel like. 7.25 million, we went back to Inter. It's basically a case of, although he's not like he's, he's competent on that right side, can play across that front line, can play slightly deeper as well if we need to, can play as the forward, like good finishing ability, good off the ball, good pace, can kind of do a little bit of everything and has the experience that not many Manchester United players have of winning. And that is something that I think was important. Getting Barella in, who is a winner. Getting Perisic in, again, who's a winner. They've already got Varane. They've got Ronaldo. We're creating a bit more of a a mentality of winning and that's something that i feel like manchester united don't really have right now and they need to capture quickly if you're not going to create it from doing it yourself with the culture at the club and you haven't got a manager that's capable of doing it well one of the short-term fixes bring players that have one and know what it's like to win and instill that mentality you've seen players uh, clubs do it in recent times bringing in players like Thiago silva or liverpool brought in like james milner i know it sounds ridiculous but he had this idea of being at city and what it takes to win and those players can be crucial in crunch moments it's the sort of player Arsenal need to start going for to be taken seriously in the top four. It's the sort of player Conte will probably look to bring in at Tottenham and United need to be on that curve as well, on that trend of, you know, this is how we play now and this is how we win. And Perisic, to me, is a part of that. He's not a great leader, but again, it's just bringing in enough players with that mentality, it'll spread. So squad-wise, right now on the 15th, this is how we're looking. Um, I'm happy with aspects of this i think dean henderson can be sold if you're not going to play him manchester united let him go for a fee we're going to try and get him over the line tom heaton is a is a more than adequate backup to de gea in my opinion um center back wise you may have thought that was an area we should strengthen i actually think maguire by lindelof and varan is a very good set of four and you've also got mctominay to be a backup there if needs be he's a player that i've not sold i don't think it makes sense to sell him when i talk about all the players that we've brought in the likes of renato sanchez and barella He's just one of... He's he's similar to them, just not as good. But he, he makes sense to have here again. United, United is, uh, he's come through their systems, of course. Physically really good. Work rate is brilliant. Use him in the right way. Don't put too much, too, uh, don't put too much pressure on him. I think you actually have a really good player here. So he definitely stays. The likes of Telesh and Shaw you've got to play left back. Delo, of course, is the is the backup to Wambasaka, but a little bit more technical, and we might see him in the future. Wambasaka is very good defensively, very good one-on-one, -on -one, but going forward is that 
good enough, especially in this year's Football Manager match engine, the crossing and the dribbling. Of course, that takes us out of the real life events that we're trying to replicate here. But um, you have to hope that going forward, he's got he's got what you need in attacking fullback areas. And in forward areas, again, lots of players that you might have thought would leave. But again, we're, we're trying to build a really capable squad here. Uh, Donny van der Beek, of course, stays. He's sort of the natural replacement for uh, for Bruno Fernandes, in my mind. Uh, Lingard there to play up amongst the forward line. Amit Diallo, who I think, as at least the football manager, looks like a really good young player. Still a lot to learn, but I think off the bench late in games, again, that pace, agility, dribbling... It's all pretty good to me. It's someone that you can keep around for sure. Uh, Rashford, Greenwood, again, of course, they're staying as well. And I think this squad can definitely win the league. And I, and I thought the United squad before had a chance. This one, I think, definitely could. So do it better isn't just a case of take Oli. People might be watching this thinking, well, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer didn't have this squad. How is this fair? To me, Manchester United got their summer window wrong, and I've gone and corrected it. And these are some of the moves I think they should have made out of out of out of added Sancho. I think the, the problem for United was there were too many players that they weren't prepared to let go on the cheap that would actually evolve their squad. They, they are Manchester United. They have the money to improve. They are Manchester UFC. They have the money to improve that squad if they want to. I've seen their share prices. They could probably afford it, but they uh, they chose not to. Now, tactically, how does this work out? Well, this is what we're working with, and. I know you've seen it straight away. I'm not playing Cristiano Ronaldo as that main man up front. I am playing Edison Cavani as that main man up front. He has what I need in a target man so much more than I think Ronaldo does. Don't get me wrong, this, this guy is phenomenal. But there's a few things I'm looking at and the main one is this teamwork seven he's not that bothered what everybody else is doing teamwork work rate aggression they don't make sense for a pressing forward he can't play pressing forward that's the, that's basically the, the long and short of it they're the attributes you need for pressing forward bravery teamwork work rate aggression he doesn't really have them what he does have is flair is creativity is technique is finishing is first touch is jumping reach is heading right these things that might apply at the back post if you've got Jaden sancho running down the other side now sancho is a player that loves to cut in loves to get involved and he can do that from a wide right position but i want him beating players i want him going past them right again that dribbling ability the acceleration he's got all the tools united at the moment they're trying to have him sort of be this creative flair player that interlinks with everybody else stick him out there tell him to beat his man and put crosses in for cavani for cristiano ronaldo and then Barella and Fernandez that are coming in late. And that's the idea of this midfield then. Condogbia sitting at the base of it, sweeping up everything, telling Barella, telling Fernandez, go and do your business, boys. Once we've got the ball, make things happen. This is where Barella comes in. And, and how you're playing Shaw is pretty crucial as well. I think Shaw's pretty good going forward. But when you're playing Ronaldo in this Trequatista role on that side, which is basically a free role in the way that we're playing it, we need there to be cover. So rather than having a box-to-box -box or anything like that, we're having a wide shuttler in Barella. The work rate, phenomenal. If he was left-footed, this would be even better. But he's not quite. Moving into channels is something he's really happy to do. Gets forward whenever possible as well. So if Ronaldo is drifting in field or drifting forward, Barella is there constantly to be that support network and to defensively cover. You have Kondogbia and Barella on that side, cleaning up when you can and sure defensive wing back he'll still push forward into these areas but he won't constantly look to overlap Ronaldo and leave Maguire exposed which you sometimes see happen in real life that's not what we're going for we're using sort of a protection network of Barella and Dogby and Shaw and maybe that would be at times Fernandez, McTominay and Telesh and, and again having those three options to come in and change it would work pretty well for me and, and I talked about it before and we'll cover it again like defensively I think we're pretty good Cavani is crucial here, right? We mentioned what makes up a pressing forward and that what Ronaldo doesn't have, but work rate, teamwork, aggression, bravery, Cavani's got them all. And forcing teams back and having Cavani lead a press and have Sancho, who's come from Dortmund, remember, be a part of that press, and Barella and Fernandez, again, two players with incredible work rates. Condobia sat behind, it's a similar story. You can afford to have Cristiano Ronaldo just sort of swan about and not worry about it too much and i think the window in this sense makes perfect sense this is the way united should be playing controlling the ball when they've got it having sancho ronaldo cavani link up have fernandos be a part of that as the as the playmaker but then without the ball you play a high line and you're prepared to press quickly in an attempt to win that back if you go through some of the things i've put on here then 
we're counter pressing and then when we've got it we're in control of it we're not just trying to sprint forward and beat a man and get lucky with the likes of rashford and martial that's not the way i think this united team should play i think they can be better than that i think currently with the players they have they can be better than that and i think looking at the way that i'm setting up this team and i think about what would it look like if i hadn't sold anybody right you'd have pogba in this box to box role although you're actually probably playing fred in there right you're playing mctominay for condogbia it's probably still a system in my mind that can work. And I look at the fact that Zidane is available for United right now. And again, by the end of this series, they might have appointed him, although interim manager of Carrick and Fletcher or something. I don't know what I don't know what they're doing. Um like they, I'm not saying this is this is Casemiro, Modric, and Cruz. But to me, that's the way Manchester United should be heading and with a January window up, maybe sign players that fit that mould. So transfer wise, I'm pretty happy. And I think this this makes sense and hopefully my explanation makes sense as well let me know what you think comment section transfer wise how do you think i've done again i'm not interested if you think that i should do it in the way that ollie did it and use the players that ollie did that's not really what i'm talking about i think this problem started in the summer and it sort of got even worse when they signed ronaldo so i wanted to fix everything i'm doing manchester united better but let's go forward let's play a few games and let's see let's see if it works hello welcome back we are three games in to the season so far and I'm smiling. I'm pretty happy with the way it's gone so far. It's it's working. It's working better than I could have imagined it would work. But there may be some issues with the foot manager, foot manager match engine. Let's delve in. Let's take a look and let's transition to this screen. We are top of the league with Cristiano Ronaldo, our top goal scorer, the highest average rating. It's fair to say, viewers, on this left hand side, it's working. Uh, transfer wise we're at the first of september now and we didn't do any more business i left it open just in case on deadline day we made some moves we still have 40 million to spend with 373,000 there as well so when january rolls around who knows maybe we'll make a couple of moves extra that makes sense if we're seeing some weaknesses in the side we will talk in depth next episode about how this tactically works but to give you a brief understanding of who's scoring who's doing well and why it's working you can see ronaldo very much in the goals varan from set pieces has got a couple cavani renato sanchez bruno fernandez and jane sancho also on the score sheet and uh, some assists to their name as well aaron basaka we mentioned his crossing already two assists to his name as well and ronaldo is dominant there's something i want to show you though and it's kind of in part of how we're playing when I talk about how we're getting the best out of Sancho and wan Basaka not playing a defensive wing-back role in the same way that Shaw is, remember, on the left-hand side. Getting crosses in is crucial to how this Manchester United team plays. And actually, when I look back at Manchester United teams of overlapping fullbacks, whether it be Gary Neville or Antonio Valencia, this has always been something United have done and done pretty well. So as we go to the scoring chart and you take a look at what type of goals we've scored, a few play shots in there, you know, a few headers as well, but our assists, this is kind of where it becomes crucial. One through ball, four crosses, three corners and one free kick it was a whipped in free kick that was headed in i believe by ronaldo so so far so good we've won these first three games newcastle leeds and burnley and they are three games you'd probably expect us to win when we return for the next episode it'll be around this arsenal liverpool uh, area and we'll see how we've got on when we play those sides we might even do a live commentary of one of the games as well but of course i'll be filling you in on how we do on our champions league group which i'll be honest is pretty soft and of course how the system is working all in all we'll have played leicester we'll have played city and arsenal within that as well there'll be lots to divulge lots to go into and hopefully you enjoyed this episode of do it better if you did do leave a like on the video if you're looking forward to the rest of the series do drop a like on it it's not the fun I'll still make jokes, but it's not the funny series that you may be used to. If you've seen Do It Better before and you want to see what it's like throughout an entire series, I did one with Chelsea last year. And of course, with what Chelsea have gone on to do, I, I sort of did it post Lampard. Uh, you might enjoy it. So I'll leave a link to the, in the description to the Chelsea Do It Better. Again, five part series, quite easily digestible. And uh, yeah, for the rest of this week, Manchester United and me, we're going to get on like a house on fire. We love with care. For me, that's Ben Chelsea. See you next time. Goodbye.